The Acolyte has landed, introducing the High Republic era to many Star Wars fans. Is it a big hit, or has the show taken large strides before learning to walk? Diving straight into the show, the structure of the story is very reminiscent to the beginning of The Force Awakens, in that we are dropped into a story with characters midway through their journey, thus leaving both the villains and hero stories with a shrouded past, instead leading with mystery, big questions and intrigue as its central driving force, and it does this very well. Within the first two episodes, certain characters are fleshed out, and I immediately understood their past and future. Some characters, however, suffered from a lack of screen time, needing more time with them to establish who they are, their internal struggles, if any, and what the story may have in store for them. In episodes to come, I wish to see a deeper dive into the characters' past, establishing their moral compass and motives well enough to heighten the stakes for our leading characters. I'm not ready to say either way where this ranks in my list of Star Wars shows, but the plot of the show certainly captured my imagination, and I'm here for the journey. Delving into the standout positives, exploring the many Jedi spread far and wide across the galaxy was an absolute treat. The experience felt unique and a very interesting base from which to build a story upon. Being 10,000 strong in numbers, the show helped to establish their numbers by travelling from one temple to the next. Visiting the variety of Jedi temples is something I hope to see explored further within the coming weeks. It adds another special layer to the show and world building. I loved exploring the remnants of the Jedi temples during Jedi Survivor gameplay. It was a highlight for me. However, I would have loved to have spent more time within the walls of the Coruscant Jedi Temple, showcasing a more vibrant Jedi-packed hallway, with ships taking off and coming into land, and hopefully this world and culture building is something we'll see further down the line. Interestingly, the show titles come in two, a new rule of two if you will, representing that there are two sides to every story. I hope by the time we get to the finale and the truth is revealed, the final episode has a single title instead of two, summarising the plot's conclusion. My biggest hope at this stage is that we aren't working our way towards Osha saving Mae from the dark side, and the central villain becoming our masked and unnamed Sith. Do I believe this is the plot? Probably not. There's an abundance of plot lines far more intriguing, and I trust the writers behind the show to deliver both a giant rug pull moment and an epic finale to this show. Looking at the characters introduced in the first two episodes, and Sol certainly had the most depth written to him. He reminded me very much of Qui-Gon Jinn during The Phantom Menace, sensing an uncertainty in the Jedi with regards to the Jedi Order's decision making, and his part to play in the events that took place at the Burning Village, and consequently, the fates of both Mei and Osha. He was torn and clearly struggling with the past, letting slip that Osha had a twin sister, something we learn was coincidentally wiped from the Jedi Archive. Moving on to Carrie Ann Moss, what else can be said other than she was as awesome as ever? Dodging Blades Matrix style and using the Force added up to an epic and well-crafted intro to the show. Her calmness at the table whilst her village buddies mockingly laughed at Mei gave a sense of the Jedi's position within the galaxy's order. In addition, this established her ability to never let her guard down, as she studied Mei's potential threat. But losing Trinity this early on in the story felt sad, but as seen from the trailers, we are very likely to see her again, drawing flashbacks at the Burning Village. It's hard not to cover Osha and Mei together when discussing the first two episodes. Our leading characters are presented as the opposites within the story. We have the lost, we have the found. We have the goal of justice, and the darker goal of seeking revenge. In terms of a story plot, it's fascinating. How much does Osha know with regards to her past? I wish she'd pushed Sol on this when she remarked, Mei is killing four Jedi. This was a perfect opportunity for Osha to scream, why Sol, why? Pushing Sol at this stage of the plot would have built a greater tension between Osha and Sol. On the flip side, Mei is seeking revenge for what she knows to be the truth. What stood out to me was not only the desire for revenge, but that as a single goal. Nothing else matters to Mei, as we clearly see when she enters a packed bar demanding a fight and sneaking into a heavily secured and sacred Jedi temple. She's fearless, powerful, and is key to understanding the show's big question, why these four Jedi and what happened in the Burning Village. Moving on to Yord and Jeki, I must admit to being a tad confused by their relationship and interactions. Sure, Star Wars has successfully intertwined a comedic duo into most of its movies and TV shows, 
but undermining a Jedi Knight more than once felt as though the writers intentionally undervalued the value of a Jedi Knight to the audience, as a wiser choice in who the comedic duo would be in this show may have worked better. I loved Jackie's remarks to Sol when she said it's Yord, and this worked well as the Jedi Knight was not apparent in the room. Did this comedic duo choice work for you? As for the Sith character, more is to come, but what we were presented with was intriguing enough. I loved the reflection shot in the pool of water. The creators of the show chose this shot very wisely, as it will no doubt play into the bigger reveal and who is under the mask. My theory is that it ties into the twin sister side of the story. Is the Sith both May and Osha, a third sister perhaps? I'm excited to see how this evolves and when the reveal is finally made, based on the show putting all its eggs into the Y basket, the reveal will need to be very smart and something no one saw coming. Everyone loves a Wookiee hiding out on a retreat planet, right? Cal Necker was introduced at the very end stages of the second episode, so not much to say at this stage, but a Wookiee Jedi? It's an interesting angle, and I'm all in. The whodunit and killing spree elements of the show certainly build tension and excitement. However, May's reveal as the murderer came in an episode too early for me. Fleshing out the who, what and where foundations of the story may have captured more understanding from an audience perspective, instead of leaving the why as the only driving force. I loved that we jumped into the story, but exposition is key to establishing tone, atmosphere, unwavering empathy and likability, and I feel these elements were lacking within these first two episodes. We absolutely need more exposition going into next week's episode. A more defined reason to embrace these characters and their fate is something I hope we see throughout the remaining episodes. We have certainly gone straight into the plot, but has this full force intro worked itself as a substitute for world building, a sense of where we are, time scale and era? The decision to drop in midway is perhaps a sign of the times, with attention spans decreasing, meaning both the writers and directors utilising the first five minutes of the show to get us to the major plot points without window shopping at the exposition store along the way. I'm intrigued to find out more about the inspiration that brought this show together. Aesthetically, costume-wise and shot choice, it felt heavily inspired by Star Trek. When looking at the interior of the ships, I couldn't help but picture the inspiration board at Lucasfilm decorated with images of Red Dwarf, a show I loved back in the day. So this isn't a criticism, purely an observation. Perhaps Leslie Headland is a big fan of Red Dwarf. As mentioned up top, a good story isn't understood until fully told, and it may take time to build this story, and I'm here for the journey. And as always, I'll reserve judgement until the story is told in its entirety. What were your initial thoughts on The Acolyte and where do you think the story could be heading? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe for all our Star Wars adventures and may the Force be with you.